Stamp with Amy K YouTube Live, and today I'm going to show you how I made a card with the pretty new Country Flower Stamp Set Bundle. This is one of the newer ones from the, well, I should newer to demonstrators, brand new to customers. It will be on the um, 1st of May. Customers will be able to order this new bundle, and I uh, just made a card that I thought I would share with you today, um, showing you how I made it. So it's it's actually, it's not terrible. <laughs> There's a lot of coloring on it, um, but it's one of those that it's pretty quick and easy coloring. Um, so hopefully it, um, you'll find it as you know quick and easy as I do. So, and I love this stamp set. I know I'm gonna be using it a ton. So, <laughs> so be prepared. You're gonna be seeing lots of cards made with the Pretty Country Flower stamp set. So this is what we're gonna be making today. Like I said, background is just designer series paper, added a couple of stamped images and a sentiment and a few little butterflies and it's all done. So. It's a fairly quick and easy card, and I actually did some of the coloring ahead of time, so since a lot of it was repetitive, uh, I didn't want to have to sit and color the whole thing while you sat here and, you know, watch the paint dry sort of thing, so... Hey Sally, thanks for hopping in today. I appreciate you being here. So this is it. Um, this is the stamp set. Again, this will be available to order beginning on the 1st of May when the new annual catalog comes out. So it's got lots of good sentiments in it. Love that it has a pretty sympathy sentiment in it. Um, there's a best friends one, uh, sending love and so lucky to know you. And then this little flower market one is actually designed to stamp on um, the little pail. I think it will also fit on this the little teapot image. I think both either way you could use it, but um, and again you can use it separately too. But that's it's designed to stamp on top of the images. So it's a photopolymer stamp set, so it's easy to see through, easy to stamp with. And then we've got the coordinating dies that go with it as well. Hey Pam, thanks for joining today. Um, the dies, the open ones. These um, are all designed to cut out the stamped images, and I'll be using. Actually, I think every single one of those today. <laughs> so um, I use quite a few of the dies. And then there is this one that is just a standalone that you can use as a, like a smaller little um, pot of some sort, a little flower pot. And then this is a lid and ooh, it is designed to fit on top of the teapot. And I think it also will fit on top of the little kind of more bucket looking image. So if you wanted that, you could do it. But I think it's technically technically designed to fit on top of the little teapot. Um, so if you don't want to put flowers in it and just want the little teapot, you can do that. And then there are some accessory dies. These are little flower dies. Um, and it actually does cut it out. This is all one that'll cut it out, out the flowers. This one will cut out individual flowers. And so will this one. And then we've got some leaves. Again, this one cuts out a little grouping of leaves. And then these are, that's you know, obviously these two are paired together, but then there are two individual leaves in both of these and these are the same little leaf dies so if you're cutting out a whole pile of leaves same thing with these flowers same flower dies so if you're cutting out a whole pile of them it makes it go much faster so hey Triva thanks for hopping in and Jody's here as well all right so this is the the country flower stamp set bundle and again it'll be available start starting on the first of May for customers to order it's available in the demonstrator pre-order right now so if you are a demonstrator you can get your hands on this um, or if you are interested in joining so you can get your hands on it early and you can get the discount, let me know, because I'd love to chat with you more about uh, joining our little team of demonstrators. So, um, hey, Christine, glad you're here. Got your new catalog today. Yay, it arrived, woo! <laughs> so, uh, glad that it's finally there. And I see Quinn is here as well. So, I also used for the sentiment on it. Um, this is a little happy birthday sentiment from the Unbounded Love, which is also a new bundle from the upcoming catalog. And it is a bundle, obviously, where it's the stamps are all sentiment images so you can take your pick in there and it's always nice to have a mix and match of those some for inside some some for outside of the card and then this is a set of coordinating dies that goes um, fits around I think all of the sentiments will fit inside one of the dies on here um, and then also it's a good die set just to, to have in general because it will fit around a lot of other sentiments and uh, smaller images as well so um, so this is the unbounded love bundle and it is part of one of the big mega suites where there's actually another stamp set bundle and some paper and embellishments and all that sort of thing um, that will go with it and the country flowers is as well so all right a um, couple things the um, online exclusives make sure you're taking a peek at those anytime that you're out shopping uh, in the Stampin' Up! store just because things come and go from there there are currently some really good things out there I think there are five six five or six pages of online exclusive items so make sure you're checking those out again they're not tied to any catalog so they will come and go uh, as they're in stock and out of stock and uh, whatever so just make sure you're taking a look at those and I see them all sorts of crazily crooked on here I may slide my little camera over just a hair too 
All right, um, so make sure you're looking at those. And then don't forget the last chance product sale is going on right now. So all the retiring items from the current January to April 2024 mini catalog and the 23 to 24 annual catalog. And there's a big list from the annual catalog of things that are retiring. Um, so make sure that you're checking those out. The sale prices started on Tuesday. Everything that's retiring is while supplies last. So if there's something you're wanting, make sure you get out and get it because stuff is selling out. Um, pretty quickly. So I see uh, Robin and Karen and Marilyn and Barbara and Rocky, everybody, thanks for hopping in. All right, so this paper is actually from the um, Country Woods, I think is the name of the suite. Country Woods suite? I think that's what it is. Um, but this is the Country Lace Designer Series paper. Uh, again, it's part of the suite. You can buy it individually as well. You don't have to get it in the, the suite, but the suite just makes it easy. So you can push one button and get all the awesome products that go with it. And this is part of the, um, it's in with the Country Flowers uh, stamp set bundle in that same suite. So this is, it's an awesome pack of paper. And then the other pack of paper that's in it is a wood grain one, which I'm, I have to stop myself because I've used it all, way too much already. <laughs> like I need another pack. I've used a lot of that paper. I love it. So um, so this is, again, Country Lace is the name of it. And this is the new Basic Beige. Well, it's obviously got some white in it as well, but Basic Beige and White um, for this design. And then this is Basic Beige cardstock. And this is going to be available, to, again, starting on the 1st of May uh, for everyone to order. It's available now for demonstrators to pre-order. So, all right, let me stick this together. Uh, measurements and everything will be on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com, and I will link up directly to the blog post um, in the description of the video, so you'll be able to go and find it there, and I'll have a printable PDF tutorial and all that good stuff. Um, but measurement-wise, this is three and a half inches wide by five and a half, and then the paper that I've got underneath it is three and five eighths by five and a half. So. Um, it'll cover most of the card front, but not quite every single thing. Um, then I've got boho blue for my card base, and we're just going to stick it together with a little stamp and seal. And you can use your liquid glue if you like it. Um, I just try not to use it because I usually end up making a mess with it. So um, to help me line it up a little bit easier, I'm just going to put it down here on my grid paper so that I've got it lined up fairly evenly with the edges here. And um, that gives me a guide as far as centering it up and down anyway and trying to figure out where the um, where the center of it is so that it's fairly even on both sides now it's never going to be perfect <laughs> as perfect as i think i am at adhering things it's never perfect but if you put it on your grid paper that gives you a uh, kind of a good guide to go by so all right um let's get started in doing a little stamping um, and ahead of time, I will tell you, I did do, like I said, some of the stamping and coloring and die cutting so you didn't have to sit and watch every single thing be done. Um, but we're going to do quite a bit of stamping and coloring, so I'll try to get through this here fairly quickly. We've got Tuxedo Black Memento Ink, and that is the ink that works well with our Stampin' Blends markers. It's a water-based black ink. And... Um, yeah, you just want to make sure you're using water-based ink with the alcohol markers. Or if you're using uh, water-based markers, then you want to have alcohol ink. and Or you can just stick your finger right in it like I just did there. <laughs> See? This is why I don't like liquid glue, because, you know, if I can get ink all over myself that easily, you can only imagine what a mess I make with glue. All right. Well, I think we'll twist that. Probably should have got a bigger piece of paper, huh? And we're going to stamp the little... This is the green flower, green flowers, greenery image. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, then we've got the little pale image here. Again, just stamping it all in uh, tuxedo black memento ink so that I can color it with my Stampin' Blends markers. And then we've got our little teapot image. And we'll go ahead and stamp that here. And then the final image is the little stool. And we're going to stamp that as well in tuxedo black memento ink on the basic white cardstock. Hey, Julie and Karen, I see have joined us as well. Thanks for joining. All right, let's grab some Stampin' Blends markers. I'm going to get my card out of the way before I accidentally drop something I don't want on it. And, oh, I forgot my crumb cake marker. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> And it's funny because right before I went live, I'm like, what am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? I know there's something. I, everything can't be here. <laughs> and it was crumb cake marker. All right, so I'm going to start with the light crumb cake. And we're just going to color in. Again, I usually start with the light when I'm doing my 
stamped and blends markers. And basically, I don't color, I don't spend a lot of time putting um, a lot of effort into coloring it all perfectly. I just want to get the color on the image. So coloring the top of the stool, whoop, and then turning it, and we're going to color in the little legs. Uh, same thing, next leg here. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one. And again, I'm starting with the light and filling it in. And then I'm going to come back in with my dark crumb cake marker. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of dark anywhere where I feel like there would be a little bit of a shadow, which I feel like each of the little legs would probably have a little bit of a shadow from the top of the stool on it. And then here along the edges, I usually assume that there would be a little bit of a, a shadow there. And then just a little bit here in the corner. And then I'm going to come back in with my light. So, oh, yay, glad you're here. Thanks for hopping in and yay for a day off of work. So I'm going to come back in. And again, I start up near where the dark is at and blend with the light. And then just kind of pull it down the rest of the way to fill it in. So I try not to over blend it and blend away all of the shading. So again, just blending the two colors together up near the top and then pulling down so that it's not a harsh line anywhere. Again, blending up here near the top and then go over here and pull down. And, oh, hey, Darlene, glad you're here and glad you're here as well. Uh, Carol and Janet, thanks for joining. All right, again, same thing on the little leg here blending the two together, and then just pulling the, the color down a little bit. And then we'll get the edge colored as well. Do, do, do. And do this right up here at the top. And then just kind of pull the, the ink over a little bit. And the same thing, we'll start over here on this side. And up here. And then we'll just pull the, the color over a little bit. In the top, I'm going to leave a little bit of light here right in the middle um, because the plant's going to be sitting on top of it anyway, so nobody's really going to see it. All right, so that's it for the little step stool. And I also forgot my old olive marker. My goodness. It's a good thing I don't have these in like a whole different room. <laughs> Gosh. Aye. All right, so we're going to start with the light old olive, and we're going to color in the little leaves here. And next little leaf here. So hopefully y'all are enjoying your Friday. I'm actually been kind of working ahead and a little bit crazy. Um, I did some bad planning. I'm actually going to be out on a trip <laughs> the first, um, right when the catalog kicks off. So I leave town on the 26th of April and I don't come back until May 11th. Um, I clearly had not looked at the Stampin' Up! calendar when we planned this trip. We're going to be doing a little cruise um, over in Italy. So I'm looking forward to that, um, my husband and I, and uh, actually Mary, who is on my team, and her husband are actually uh, joining us as well. So we're looking forward to uh, going and hanging out in Italy for a little while. And uh, both of us earned the Stampin' Up! trip this year, um, but neither of us is going on it. It's a trip to... Mexico, so we decided to cash out and use the funds from the trip towards our uh, little cruise in Italy. So we're looking forward to that. And um, so, yeah, I'm sure we'll be sharing pictures from over there, but <laughs> goodness. Um, but yeah, uh, I, like I said, I couldn't believe it when I looked at when the catalog was going to go live. And of course, we planned this trip ages ago. Looked at when the catalog went live, and I'm like, oh no, what have we done? But oh well, it'll be a blast. We'll still have kind of internet access over there, so I'll still be able to do emails and such, but um, but yeah, it might be, it may take me a little while to respond. We'll just say that. Probably won't be real speedy responses. So, all right. Adding a little bit of the dark old olive in. Again, just putting it in areas where I think that there would be a little shading. So I can't wait. I'm glad y'all, I'm yeah. I've been to Italy a couple times, but we've never done anything like this where it's been um, like a cruise around Italy before. So uh, we're, we start in Venice. Well, actually, we're flying into Rome, obviously, because that's where it's easiest to fly in and out of. Um, 
So we are flying into Rome and then we are going to be in Rome for a couple days and then take a train to Venice where we get on the boat at and then we go around the bottom of Italy and um, yeah, so it should be fun and we end up in the port of Rome is where the we land on the cruise. So looking forward to it. It'll be relaxing and a little crazy. <laughs> With the catalog going live, like I said, I just couldn't even believe that um, when we when I looked at it and realized when the new catalog was coming, ugh, we did not plan well. <laughs> but but that's okay. We'll get through it. We'll only be gone for you know a little while. So all right, I'm coming back in here with the light and again doing the same thing that I typically do. We're going to be blending it up near where the dark is at and then just pulling the color down a little bit to make sure that it's fairly evenly covered. All right, and then we got the one final little leaf here to color in. And uh, nope, the kids are not going on the trip with us, so my sister has, is volunteering to stay with the kids, so yay, happy to have that. Um, so they'll still be here and in school and all that stuff, so uh, they don't get to come and join us. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think... Uh, the younger one probably wouldn't enjoy it very much, and the older one, yeah, she can go on a cruise of Italy herself someday. <laughs> She's going off to college this fall, so yeah, we'll have a lot of fun doing that as well. So um, for the little teapot, I've got Boho Blue that I'm using for the Stampin' Blends marker, and again, just starting with the light and just getting the color on the teapot. And um, towards the top here, I don't need to to spend a lot of time making sure that it's really nicely colored um, or straight across the top or anything like that. I can just kind of draw a line um, because that is going to be die cut and then covered up with the little plant anyway, so nobody's going to know what it looked like except you and me when we do our coloring because it'll all be glued down and covered up. So, all right. And again, just getting the, the color put on with the light stamp of blends marker. And then I'm going to grab my dark. So... And we're just going to go right along the edge, and I'm just going to put sort of a squiggly little line in here and color it out a little bit, a little bit here along the edges of the handle. Um, stretch it out a little across the bottom. And then again, come back in here, and just put the squiggly line along this edge. And then make sure that I fill in the little spot at the top and maybe a little bit here as well to make it look like there's a little shading on the teapot. So it is actually really easy. You just need to kind of, like I said, I don't, I try not to stop and think too much about it um, because the more I do that, the more I tend to overthink it and overcolor. And that's what makes the blending, is, it's, it's actually better if you don't overcolor it <laughs> or overthink it really. So um, again, just going back to where the, the two colors are meeting and trying to blend together a little bit so there's not such a harsh line. And then just gonna lightly pull the light marker across the entire little teapot again. And you can always come back in with the color lifter. So if you get something that you think you overcolored or it's colored too dark and you wanna lighten it up, just come back in with your color lifter and uh, you can remove some of the color from it. And we'll actually be doing that on one of these so I can show you a little bit how that works. So there we go, got the little teapot done. Then we're gonna color the little pail. And I've got Smoky Slate. And I'm starting with the light again. So yep, like I said, I usually, you know, especially um, the first images that I always encourage people to, to try to color are things that are like flowers and leaves. Um, things that are very forgiving like that because none of the things are perfect in nature. Um, I would not recommend starting with people because that to me is the most difficult to color and make it look a little realistic. So to me, it's easier to start with images like these where, you know, if you get a pail and it's kind of dented up and not exactly perfect color all the way around, then we just call it vintage. <laughs> Nobody knows. So that's my theory on it is I just put the color on until it looks good to me and then I stop. So, all right, so I've started with the light smoky slate. I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of the dark. So, and again, just gonna go right along the edges here, like I've been doing with all the others. And a little bit here along the bottom. There we go. 
And then I'm going to grab my light again and blend it together a little. So you're all getting rain where you are here in New Jersey. It was pouring earlier today. Of course, I ran out to get a haircut and uh, I made it into the little uh, spot to get my haircut. And like as the door was closing, the downpour started. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank goodness I made it in before that happened. But then, of course, after I got done with the haircut, then I did have to go out. Thankfully, it wasn't raining quite as bad as it was when um, I was getting my haircut, but uh, it was still raining pretty good. So, all right, and then we're going to grab um, a little bit more color and put it across the bottom, a little bit more, put it there. And then I'm going to take my color lifter, actually, and that's where we're going to do a little bit of blending and um, lightening with that. So the color lifter is basically just the alcohol ink in the marker with no color in it. So you'll see, hopefully, um, as it dries, it'll start to lighten things. And you can also overcolor with the color lifter. And if you, you know, so I usually do one layer on and kind of let it dry, give it a second, make sure that it's doing what I want it to do. And then I can always come back in and lift a little bit more color. And if you take too much off, you can add a little more color back on. Um, but like I said, color lifter to me is a nice little tool to have. Also, if you end up accidentally having a little oopsie outside the line, you can take your color lifter and kind of just push the ink right back inside the line as well. So um, it's a great tool to have. So if you have Stampin' Blends, make sure you're picking up a color lifter as well. So, all right. So there we go. So that is it. Kind of tried to make it look like it was a little bit uh, of an older pail. <laughs> so um, almost never use the bullet tip end. I didn't see in the brush tip end for me gets mashed and like out of control and then I end up making a mess. So that's why I used to use the brush tip all the time. And then I just found that I was not happy with what I was getting for the coloring results. So I switched to the bullet tip and I've been much happier since then with the way that I color things. So, but I kind of tend to have a heavy hand in most things. So if you're, you know, not heavy handed like I am, you may find it a little easier to use the the brush tip end, but I mashed the ends of the little brush tips on mine really quickly when I used them. So the bullet tip works well for me in the way I color. But yeah, the brush tip end, same way, it's the same basic principle that you're going to use when you color. Um, you're just going to use the, the little, um, little softer end on it. So again, back with the boho blue, and I'm coloring in this, the two larger flowers in this little arrangement. All right. Uh, started with the light and come back in um, with the dark and we're just going to go around the center here and kind of up in between the little petals on the larger flower and then on the smaller flower I'm kind of making a little V here in between the um, where the smaller flower is at and then I'm just going to go a little bit of dark right around the center of it and do a little bit of pulling out of the color on the, the smaller flower and make sure that I've got it colored all the way in around the edges because it looks like I missed a few spots there. All right. I think we're going to call that good on the, the uh, smaller of the two flowers. And then again, just going to come back, blend where the line is at on my larger flower. And then pull the color out from there to make it a little more even around. So there's not quite such a harsh line. If you like it to have a little bit more of a harsh line, then you don't have to come out and do the additional coloring on it. You can just leave it as it is. So, all right, done with the boho blue. Then I'm gonna use uh, Moody Mauve is my next color. And that is what I've colored in. I think I have the light here, I should, yep. Um, colored in the little, I don't know, these are kind of almost rose looking flowers to me or tulips, I'm not sure what they are. Probably not, I don't know. They're probably based on a real flower, but I'm not entirely sure. I am not a flower expert. I just know that they're pretty. <laughs> so there. All right. And then coloring in the last of the little flowers here. Then I'm going to come back in writing on myself too. So apparently it wasn't good enough just to put black ink all over my thumb. I also need to then put a little bit of color onto you <laughs> on the other thumb so that uh, it looks extra crazy. And again, just coming back in with a little bit of dark uh, down near the bottom, anywhere where I think there would be a shadow. And then I'll come back in with the light and just whoop, pull up from the bottom, try to get it so there's not a real harsh line. 
And if you've left a comment or asked a question and I missed it, I apologize. Sometimes when I get coloring, it's a little difficult to look up and stay inside the lines. <laughs> so um, if I missed anything and didn't answer it, feel free to ask me again. So, all right, uh, I've got my uh, old olive marker here and this is the last little bit of coloring that we have to do. And I'm just gonna color in the leaves. Again, starting with the light. And, whoop, went a little out of the lines on that one. We'll see how it looks when we get done. I'm gonna use the color lifter and show you how you can push it back in. All right. And then this, I wasn't really sure whether it was a leaf or a flower. It looked kind of leafy to me, so I went ahead and colored it as though it was a leaf. Um, if you think it should be a flower, you can color it as a flower. I wasn't entirely sure what it was, so I went, well, it looks kind of like a, a group of leaves, so I'm going with leaf. <laughs> so, and those of you that are flower people will probably know what flower it is and um, can probably tell me what color it's supposed to be, but all right. So again, just gonna come in here with a little bit of the dark on all my little leaves that I've just colored. And I realized I forgot to color the flower centers. So I've got petal pink to do that. So I'll be doing that in just a second here. And I think we'll call that good on the dark. And then just gonna pull out my light and blend together a little bit. And we'll be done. So like I said, it's pretty quick and easy, especially the floral images. You can just kind of color as much or as little as you want to on them. Pretty easy to do. And you can even do it while you're talking like I'm doing. <laughs> Although I might not recommend it when you start. But there we go. A couple little leaves over here to blend. All right, and then I told you I went kind of, whoops, out of the line on that one. I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but I can see it here. So I'm just gonna take my color lifter and push it right back in. And then that kind of erases the boo-boo on it. Now, if you've colored it in, you know, a red or a hot pink or something like that, you may have a little harder time pushing it back inside the line. I'm not gonna see, it'll take it 100 100% away, but a lot of it'll go away um, if you end up going outside the line. So. There you go, that's it, my quick and easy coloring tips. And uh, like I said, I used petal pink to color in the flower centers. Let's get that mess cleaned up. And now we're gonna start doing some die cutting. So I have got this die that will cut this little grouping. This one is gonna cut this little thing. And we've got the little step stool the pail and the flower or the teapot. So I'm probably gonna have to do this as a couple of passes through my die cutting machine just because I don't want anything hopefully to slide. So um, I will probably make two or three passes through the die cutting machine to get these all cut. So I'll be off screen for just a second. Tape, so hopefully that will help a little. And if you don't have post-it note tape, I will leave that laying there so you can uh, take a look at it. And this is what I use for almost all things stamping. It works well and it's removable, so. All right, so let's get die cuts out here that I've got so far. Ugh. There's the little pail and the leaves. So the only one I have left to do is the grouping of flowers. Get this die put away over here. All right. Let's 
There's my final die cut. And get the die over here and set those aside so hopefully I don't lose track of any of that. And then like I said, I had these two that were done ahead of time. Uh, next thing I need to do is grab my um, uh, Moody Mauve cardstock and my little embossing buddy and we're gonna do some heat embossing. So, um, oh, you definitely need to get this set. Yep, it's a good one. It's, yeah, one of my favorites. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I've got a happy birthday sentiment. Again, it's from the Unbounded Love stamp set, which is also one of the new ones from the upcoming catalog. So it's got pretty fonts in it, little Versamark ink. And I'm gonna grab some white embossing powder. Um, Stampin' Up's embossing powder, the basics, which this is from, is actually sold out right now. And they're working with a new manufacturer and it's coming back, but I don't know exactly when. We've just been told hopefully this fall we'll have it. Um, I don't know what the delay is, but hopefully it'll be back soon. Um, so white embossing powder, and then I'm gonna grab my heat tool. Stampin' Up Heat Tool has two settings on it. There's a level one setting for drying and a level two setting for heat embossing. So the level one setting is if you're doing something like watercoloring um, and want it to speed up the process a little bit, you can use the level one setting. And then level two setting is for uh, heat setting. So it takes just a second for it to heat up. So I just was pointing it off into space and waiting for the uh, heat tool to heat up a little bit. And then you'll see as it um, finishes the heat embossing process. You'll see it start to turn smooth and shiny. Um, then you'll know it's done. You can burn your embossing powder, so make sure you don't hold the heat tool over it forever and ever. Um, you wanna make sure it's all heated, obviously, but don't hold it in one spot for too long because um, it turns brown and not quite so pretty. So, all right, so there we go. We got our sentiment all done. I'm gonna die cut that really quickly with one of the coordinating unbounded love dies. And I picked this one. There are a couple of them that fit around it, but I like this one the best with the style card I was doing. So I'm gonna go run it through my die cutting machine. All right, now we have all the die cut pieces. I promise we're actually getting close to being done. <laughs> it just took a minute to get all that coloring done. I'm gonna start by going ahead and putting my sentiment on here, uh, just because that's gonna be tucked down under everything else. So I wanna make sure that that's on here. And generally I know where that's gonna land. I'm not gonna smash smash it down at this point, just because I have quite a few other things to um, put down on my card and I wanna make sure that everything is gonna be in the spot that I want it to be before I give everything a good smoosh and um, have everything be final. So got the little pail over here. This is the flower and pail that I did not color live. So again, same process that I used for coloring. Um, this one is just a little different style of flower. So I'm gonna grab stamp and seal. You can use glue dots as well, whatever your favorite adhesive is. And then just wanna make sure that this is gonna sit on here and um, not cover up my whole sentiment. I don't mind that it covers up the edge of it, but I didn't want the whole thing to be covered. Then we're gonna grab the little step stool. And I think I'm gonna grab some glue dots to put that on. Did I forget to turn out the light is on? It just seemed like it got awfully dark all of a sudden. So I'm not sure if it's outside got darker or <laughs> for what happened for sure, but wanna make sure I had all my lights on too. So, all right, glue dots on the back of here and we're gonna put the little step stool down. I think we'll kind of go down here near the bottom and then grab the, the second pail and yeah, we'll glue dot that on too since I have them out already. All right. And uh, I know one of my customers popped on and said that she'd gotten her catalog today. I did mail them out on Wednesday, so they are in the mail and uh, should be, you should be receiving them soon if you are a customer of mine. Um, if you're not a customer of mine but would like to get a catalog, I've got a little form you can fill out on my blog. So head out to stampwithamyk.com and fill out a catalog request form, and I will get one in the mail to you as well. All right, so this one, I actually am covering up a little bit more of the pail than you can have it sticking way up here, but I knew that was going to be off the top of my card. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm down below the crease on the card, at the top of the card, when I stick it down. So there we go. Then we've got our little teapot as the final. Whoop, my, here's my partial 
sheet of dimensionals. They were laying on the floor. Apparently, I was throwing things around, too. So um, these are my little half dimensionals. I chopped my full dimensionals in half. If you like the whole dimensionals, you can use them. If you like the mini dimensionals, you can use those. Um, but I like my half dimensionals. I started using them long before the minis ever became a thing. And I don't know, I guess that makes me old. I'm just stuck in my ways and didn't want to change because <laughs> I like this size of the uh, half dimensionals the best. So, and again, just want to make sure that this, yep, so that's going to fit on there well underneath my sentiment so I can officially smoosh the sentiment down. And I'm going to put a couple stamp of dimensionals on the back of the greenery piece. Um, the only thing to be a little aware of when you're putting your dimensionals or whatever adhesive on the back of the greenery, in particular for using dimensionals, give it a little space down here at the bottom so that you don't accidentally put a dimensional where it's going to be sticking on top of the little teapot when you slide it together. So there we go. And the other thing is, if you are confused like I was for almost a second there, um, just make sure that you've got your stem straight and then you, you'll know that you'll have it in the right spot. Your stem shouldn't be sticking off to the side like that. So, all right, so that's most of the card front done. I'm gonna grab some uh, brushed brass butterflies, uh, which are really pretty and they're one of those carryover items. They've been around for a little while. And we're just gonna grab a couple of those to put them here up on the sentiment, a bigger one and a smaller one. And that's it for the card front. It's all done. So inside of the card is super simple, thank goodness, because <laughs> I'm sure you all are getting tired of me yakking. Um, I've got a piece of basic white cardstock. This is cut to about uh, four and a quarter by, or sorry, four by five and a quarter. And then I've got a little piece that I trimmed off when I was making the card front from, of the uh, Country Lace Designer Series paper. And just going to put a little stamp and seal on there. This is about five eighths of an inch wide. And we're just going to stick that here to the bottom of this little piece of cardstock. Um, there we go. And it is oversized. It's the full six inch piece that I normally would have laying around. And because I can always trim it down, it's hard to make it be a little bit bigger. So there you go. Um, just got your order. So all right. Yay. Have fun playing with this because it's a pretty awesome, awesome bundle. I know you're going to love it. And the papers in this suite are so pretty. So all right. Flip this over and get it stuck on the inside of the card, and we will be all done for today. Fold it closed and give it a quick crease. There we go. All right, so this is my card I made ahead of time. This is one we made here today where you watch me do all that crazy coloring. Um, it's a great suite. Like I said, it's a beautiful bundle, and if you get the whole suite, yay, then you get lots of bonus products as well. Um, let me know if you have questions about it. I will be posting uh, the, all the details on my blog for these cards tomorrow. Um, I'll link up to it, and I'll put the, the PDF um, out on my blog, and I'll link to it here in the description of the video, so just come on back and take a peek, and uh, you'll be able to find out all the details. So uh, thanks again, and... Uh, Oh yeah, the back side of the strip is really pretty. Like I said, with all these papers, it's so hard to figure out which one you're going to stick down and which one you're going to put up because they're all pretty. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks everybody for hanging with me a little bit longer today. I appreciate you being here. Have a wonderful weekend. I will plan to be live around two o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday. Um, then again, around two o'clock Eastern time next week, Friday. Uh, so we will see y'all later and we will chat soon.